It is my belief that each one of you is unique. There isn't another one of you on the planet. And no one has the right to tell you you're less than magnificent. Welcome to the Accidental Guru Radio Show with your host, international speaker, trainer, and author, Dob Barron. The Accidental Guru Show, where fun and practical solutions partner up to get you from under your potential and unleash the leader within you, giving you the best solid success solutions. And now, here's the elite mind strategist himself, Dob Barron. Each one of you wants you need to My beautiful, discerning, and delicious listener, wherever you are in the world on this fabulous free day, yes, whatever day of the week it is, wherever you're tuned in from, it's always free day, because it's a new day, it's a new dawn, and it's a new way of looking at your life and your ability to claim your competitive edge. Thank you for joining us. My name is Dov Barron, and for the next hour, I'm your host here at the Accidental Guru Radio Show. Broadcasting on Telstar Satellite and KWRM 106.9 FM HD3. We're broadcasting out of Seattle. And yes, we're in HD because we've been digitally enhanced to thrust deeper into the crevices of your mind and provide you with even greater listening pleasure. We're also broadcasting out around the world on contacttalkradio.com. Right now, in homes and offices around the world, there are folks just like you who are salivating like a rockweiler over a pork chop at the prospect of getting their teeth into the, all the juicy mind meat we've got for you here on today's show. Do you have friends and family who are dragging their butts through each day, the kind of folks who are just looking for a reason to turn off the idiot box and tune into some high-energy, high-value talk radio? Well, my little purse puppy... Take my advice and go drag them out of their chair or out of their bed. Yes, I know it may only be the crack of doom where you are. Nonetheless, go tell them to wrap their ears around our big, beautiful signal and subscribe to the show. Because today's show is going to have you racing to the finish line like sea biscuit on steroids to claim your leadership position. Seriously, before we take even another moment, go tell your friends to tune in and we can begin to unleash the leader within you right here on the Accidental Guru radio show. Now, that being said, every week I get a notice telling me where people are tuned in from, and many of you write to me, of course, on my blog, which is DoveBaron.com, and on my Facebook fan page, on Twitter, and of course on RadioDove.com, to tell me where you're listening in from, and I sincerely thank you for doing so. That being said, let me greet our friends and listeners to what is becoming the omnipresent Accidental Guru Show from around the world, whatever time of the day it is, wherever you are, welcome. This week I thought we'd stay a little closer to home in our greetings. So for starters, let's send our greetings out to our faithful Canadians. Yes, all our Canucks who tune in week after faithful week. And thank you for telling all of your friends to tune in too. So to all of you, hello and bonjour. To our wonderful listeners scattered across the U.S. of A., we thank you for tuning in and building the following for the show by sharing our show with your friends and family. Now, our friends and listeners back in the U.K., in the U.K., now you guys are an ever-growing group of faithful listeners. I love that you're getting out there and sharing the Accidental Guru Show with all your friends and workmates. An extra special greeting to the royals who are tuned in, especially to my mate Willie and his girl Kate. Your brother H tells me that he's got you listening to the show, so to all of you guys, we say a big royal hello. To all of our listeners around the world, we're honored that you take the time to join us here in the intimate space each and every week. From me to you, wherever you are, hello, hello, hello. Hey, in case you didn't know or you wanted a reminder to tell your friends, we want you to to sort of tap you on the shoulder, if you will. Here we go. 
Now, we will whisper in your ear and tell you, if you haven't noticed, we've packed up, we've moved, and you want to make sure that you're getting your accidental guru fix. Make sure that you catch us every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific and Sundays at 11 a.m. Pacific. Well, now on to today's show du jour. Are you having problems making a stand? Confused about how to deal with your boss, your workmate, your kids, or even your pets? Does it seem like no matter what you do, one word from you, and they do whatever they want? Do you sometimes wish that your friends and family were cattle so you could round them up like a Texas cattle farmer, and then you could actually get them to pay attention so you wouldn't have to prod them with an electric prod? Maybe you have watched Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer, and his leadership skills with dogs, and you wish you had this much leadership as he does with the, if you could just have that with your dog or your cat or even your hamster, but most of all with your friends and family. In fact, you might sometimes look at your pet and know with absolute certainty who's the leader, and you're certain it's not you. But what if your pet is doing all that weird stuff that it's doing because it's trying to communicate with you, like trying to tell you that it actually wants you to be the leader? What if you knew how to actually understand what your pet has been trying to tell you? What if you had access to your own Dr. Doolittle? Or better still, what if you knew how to be your own Dr. Doolittle? If you could do that, you would have to wonder what your dog could teach you about leadership. Dear listener, my guest today may indeed have the intellectual and intuitive doggy treats you need for your leadership dilemmas. She may be the interpreter you've been looking for when it comes to getting yourself into a leadership position in your life. My guest today will be none other than Val Hart. Val is the creator of the complete animal communication system made easy. Now, before you start saying, what the heck, who gives a gerbil's turd? I don't even have a pet, nor do I want one. Take a breath. Because this lady is one smart puppy who knows a lot about leadership and how important it is to take risk if you're going to be a leader. This Texan started out as a business de- with a business degree working for IBM as a systems analyst. She was so good at it, she formed a company with her classmates and professors and was doing very well indeed. However, like so many folks, she was good at something that made her miserable. She knew she had to get out and do something that brought her joy and passion, but like so many folks, she had no clue what that might be. Val Hart did the thing that scares the crapola out of most folks. She took a good long look at herself and decided to bury herself in personal development throughout the late 70s all the way through the 90s. What she discovered eventually led her to a place that she's now in, which is a world-renowned animal communicator and a very long way from working in a job she hated. Now, I'll tell you more about my guest and why she says animals are great teachers for humans rather than the other way around in two wags of a kangaroo's tail. As always, dear listener, we have a turbocharged show for you, so strap yourself in, stop doing all that crap that distracts you, sit down, get out a pen and a journal, and let's have a little bit of you and me time. As always, we promise that today's show will titillate your neurons. During the show, we will be solution-oriented, and there will be, of course, the usual soupçon of fun as we go. Dear listener, during our upcoming time together, my guest and I will be doing our very best to assist you getting the most practical, applicable solutions, getting you out of stuck and into massive success action, giving you the best solid success solutions. I can assure you that we've got some very juicy morsels for your sophisticated mental, emotional, and communicative palate. We want to make sure that you get every delicious bite that we have to offer. So pull up a chair, tranquilize the dog, slip into a Snuggie, and turn up the volume on the Accidental Guru Show. Because today, my guest and I will once again be providing you with the information and inspiration for taking massive action to you claiming your competitive edge. Now, back to today's show de jour. 
My guest has over 40 years experience working with close to 7,000 animals and their human owners, trainers, and veterinarians worldwide. She has taken horses that the owners were willing to put out to pasture and turned them back into top competitors. Dear listener, please help me welcome the real Dr. Doolittle, the animal communicator to the stars, the internationally known animal communicator, teacher, and author, animal behavioral training and performance expert. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and give a big accidental guru welcome to the Texas tornado who will have you sitting up and begging for more. Dear listener, a round of applause for Val Hart. <laughs> Welcome, Val. Welcome. You see, the crowd is going wild. They couldn't wait for you. Thank you, Dove. What a treat uh, to be here. All, well, it's great to have you, as always. <laughs> Our discerning listener is waiting with hexiety to take in all the wonderful gems of wisdom you're going to share with us on the show. And we're very honored that you're joining us here in the intimate space. And as this is the intimate space, let's start off by getting to know a little bit of your intimate Bits. So in the traditional of the show, Val, how about you share with our listeners something intimate, something that most people wouldn't know about you, and I dare say, possibly, a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> well, thank you, Dov, so for that eloquent uh, introduction and invitation. How could I resist to share my most embarrassing <laughs> intimate moments with the whole world? <laughs> um, goodness. Um, there are so many. I have to preface this by saying that there are so many in my life. <laughs> it's been hard to choose something to tell you. Um, but you know what? What comes up to me most recently? The last time I went out dancing with my girlfriends, there weren't any guys with us. We were all single. We decided to get out on the dance floor anyway. You know how it is. It's like okay, mm -hmm. we can. We, we're girls. We can. We can chill. We can cook. You know, we can. We can shake our booty. Anyway, after a little while, I was having fun, and I looked over, and there was this really cute guy, and he was kind of giving me the eye, and there wasn't any girls around him, so I started, you know, dancing a little more sexy, and and, uh, <laughs> and, then, this, and then this rock and roll song started, and I was really giving it a lot of energy, you know, and all the while, I was kind of gradually working my way over closer to him, and just mm -hmm. as I got right in front of him, I was... Smiling and jigging, <laughs> doing my best. I sure. tripped. I tripped. Oh, I fell. I fell to the ground right at his feet, right in the middle of the dance floor. <laughs> you literally fell for him. I literally fell for him. Oh God, he was horrified. I was embarrassed, and I just wanted to sleek off the floor. And uh, <sighs> that I can, you know, I've just got this picture of Val being all. <laughs> All smooth and doing a Beyonce moves and oh, shaking the hip there, and the guys all like, "Oh yeah, baby, come get you know." Just uh -huh. all that happening, and suddenly this Jerry Lewis fall happens, <laughs> and suddenly sexy is all over. Baby. Oh yeah, I'm dead sexy. <laughs> you want some of this, right? Exactly. <laughs> and wow, I'm sure you'll be. You walk you'll... like you've got a leg that's three inches shorter than the other one. Oh, yeah, wow, something like that. Yeah, well, you know that was. Uh... Uh, that, and I'm still single, by the way, so. <laughs> so, needless to say, that didn't work so well. Needless to say, not so good, yeah. Well, well Val, so as good. you know, our specialty on this show is sharing the different aspects of what it takes our listener to develop leadership skills in their life. Yeah. Now, you are an animal communicator, so yeah. spill the alpo. Why are dogs <laughs> the perfect teachers and leadership coaches for us two-legged creatures and what can we learn from them that can improve our lives, our business, and even maybe even our bottom line? You bet. I'm delighted to talk about this because I think dogs are the perfect teachers. And the reason is, is that the safety of the pack is based mm -hmm. on some critical rules that every dog has to follow in order to survive and be happy and healthy. And, and let me okay. preface this. By pack, I mean every relationship of two or more beings whether they're disguised mm -hmm. as animals, so, you know, other dogs, or yep. they're humans. So your family's a pack, your company is a pack, your friends just hanging out together, like us on the dance floor, we're, we're a pack. We instantly <laughs> form a pack when we get together, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so 
the opportunity to work with your dog is a perfect place to practice leadership. Because when we train our dogs, we train ourselves to be good leaders. And okay. they give us, yeah, and they give us instant feedback. They tell us right now if we're clear and if we're aligned and are in the right relationship. And they will tell us when we are not. And that's sometimes no, that's, not that's so a really easy good point. To know. That's really good. Yeah, I never thought about that because. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you can say to somebody, did you get what I was saying? Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Whereas a dog can't say those things back to you, and, and you actually have the dog will let you know in a way that's actually even more direct because it's not going to BS you. It's just going to, you know, it's either going to respond in the way you want or not. Right. right. Well, that's well, they may good. BS you. Yeah, they may BS you, but what it actually does is teach us to be more consciously aware and fully present. Yeah, absolutely, because right? a dog can't I... BS you. It just does what it does. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. My dog gives me sass. <laughs> <laughs> sass is different than BS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know how it goes. Um, but you know what? If I'm paying attention, I catch it. I notice yeah. it, and I go, okay, what did I do that made him think that that was the right thing to do? You know, right. and how am I going to respond? So we always have a choice, right? We have a, re- a choice about how we're going to react. How do, how do we take positive action, or are we just, you know following their lead and they're now in control right but you know you can't you you know you can't you can't go to work and start offering doggy treats to get people to do what you want them to do well you can try how (laughs) show me show me well you might (laughs) depends on who you work with of course (laughs) Uh, some of them may respond very well depends on your pack yeah (laughs) (laughs) Um, now please make sure you do all these copies and here's a little treat (laughs) (laughs) do your work and i'll get a treat probably not the best way to work with them so so tell me how that translates over from from leading a a dog an animal as you said which are are great because they do give you instant feedback how would that translate over to 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 dealing with people right is is it the tone of the voice that kind of thing is it oh oh that's a good question um well so Everything we do tells others how to re- respond or react to us, right? Mm-hmm. So what we put out, what we're resonating with, with the quantum resonant field, you know, the emotions, our intention, you know, all of our all our stuff, our, our energy, tells yeah. and how we respond tells others how they can treat us. Absolutely. Right. So, so, so the way, so it is the tone and it's all those kinds of things. So it's, it's, it's everything whole, that we're putting out yeah. there. It's the whole shebang. It's the whole consciousness, you know. So yeah. if you've got dog behavior problems or if you've got employee problems, you've got relationship problems, usually there's an underlying theme that I call, you're not the boss of me, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's, like that's having, a leadership problem. a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we're 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 going to go up to a break, and we're going to be okay. back in two minutes. We're, we're here right now with my guest today. My guest is Val Hart. She is an expert in animal communications, and she's taking, talking to us about what dogs can teach us about leadership. We're going to be back in two. Listen to this. Unless you want more money. People have all kinds of ridiculous ideas about what it takes to achieve vast amounts of wealth and success. Consistently, those ideas are dead wrong. Think about it. What you've been told about creating wealth has likely been from those who did not, do not, or ever likely to have it. In his book, Don't Read This Unless You Want More Money, Dov Barrett collapses your old money myths and shows you how to tap into your unique value even if you don't know what it is yet. As you turn each page of this book, Doc Barron will walk you through a process that will have them banging down your door to give you money. Don't read this unless you want more money. Subconscious Tactics of the Truly Affluent is a guaranteed bestseller you'll want to buy for friends and read over and over again. Go to www.don'treadthisbook.com forward slash money to get your copy today. Did you know that you can rate this show on iTunes? The show you're listening to right now. It's true. You can leave your thoughts about the show, the topic, the guest. You can even leave a suggestion. Then before you leave, rate the show. 
The hosts love hearing from you, so next time you download this show from iTunes, leave your thoughts and rate the show for the host and for others. Welcome back. This is Dov Barron, host of the Accidental Guru radio show. I'm here with my guest, Val Hart. Val is a world-renowned animal communicator. She has many programs, and I'm going to tell you more about some of the programs she has. Uh, she, she does amazing stuff with, with dogs, with horses, with a whole various range of animals. And one of the things that she's really learned over the years is that animals are great teachers for us in learning about leadership. And she says that dogs and, and other animals can teach us a lot about leadership. Now, you have had many chit chats with many varied animals. I assume that that doesn't mean that you are going over to Betty's house and sitting there barking at her golden retriever. <laughs> That's not how it works, right? Not not <laughs> usually, no. Because <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it works as communication. <laughs> well, everything we do is communicating. The question is, what are you saying, uh, right? Yeah, exactly. I yeah. have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just make a noise. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So in your communication, is there a sort of common theme that shows up? For instance, it, it, you know, if there was a first question that every dog wants to know that has to be answered properly in order for a relationship to blossom, What's that question that every dog wants wants to know? Oh, boy. Every dog wants to know. Very first question, and it has to be answered properly right uh -huh. off the bat. Yeah. And that is, are you ready? Yep. Who's the, Who's the leader? Are you my leader? Right? It, it, Absolutely. It, it, and, and guess what? That's exactly what we ask each other as people, too. Well, I think that I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I, th I think in many ways, and I do, do not mean to to um, be disparaging to human beings, but in many ways, you know, I think that people are followers unless they know they can be a leader, a yeah. and and if they are followers, they're looking for a leader, and they're actually. I think you're absolutely right. They're asking that question: Are you a leader? Yeah. If you are. Now, now maybe we'll have a, uh, a bit of a conflict to find out who's the real leader. And yeah. maybe it'll just be like, I'll follow you because I, I trust that you're a leader. So yeah. for me, that leadership position is, is actually about a piece of trust. So, yeah. so is, is the dog wanting to find out whether, it can, whether you're the leader or whether it can trust you as a leader? Is there a distinction there, Val, do you think? Um, th there is a distinction. One is who's the strongest personality that's mm -hmm. going to take and assume the leadership role. So there can only be one driver of the car, right? Yeah. Now, whoever gets in the driver's seat may be the one that got there first or is stronger mm -hmm. and pushed everybody out or whatever. But the second question is, can I trust you to be a good leader? Right. So if, if I'm not safe with you, then I'm leaving the pack. Mm hmm Right? So if you're, not, if you're weak or nervous, if you're not confident, you're anxious, and what you're actually doing is telling everyone else through your emotions and your energy, as well as your body language, that no, you're not trustworthy and you're definitely not the leader. At which point, they have to step in and take over because there has to be a driver. You know, there has to be a good, clear, assertive, confident leader at all times or the pack's well-being suffers and we're now in danger. So let's put that in context of, okay. of first of dogs and yep. then move it back to people. So if you're not confident in, in, in dealing with your dog? Because, you know, I, I, I mean, Val, I'm not any kind of an animal expert, and I know you are, but, you know, i got to say that I, I sometimes walk down the street and see people going down the street and their dogs are taking them for a walk. Yes. You know what I mean? I mean, just yes. and I see, uh, I, I see at the same time, I see people in the mall and their children are deciding where they're going. Yes. You know, it seems to me that it's pretty much the same gig um, and they're both on leashes, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> the one at the end of the leash is actually running the show. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's fascinating to me. It's that true. There is a really great parallel 
in leadership. Now, I'm not saying go to work and put your put your employees on a leash. That's certainly not a good idea. But I do <laughs> think I think you're right. Is that that you've got to have that sense that I trust this leadership, and and I've got to know that that person is is actually going to lead. Yes. Yeah, and, and they're not going to lead me off the off the cliff. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, remember that the best leash is between their their ears. So it's not the Say actual physical. The the best leash is not actually the physical tie. You know that you're mm-hmm. holding on to and clipped to their collar. It's actually between their ears. So okay. think so, think of a mental. Yeah, think of like a mental leash. It, it uh-huh. you know, uh, our animals and others are trained to listen to us, and we teach them whether to listen or not every with every interaction, right? And so, if we consistently show up as the right leader, a good, confident, assertive leader that they can trust, then they're going to want to do what we want them to do. They're going to be delighted and big-hearted and and happy to connect and follow our leadership and go where we ask them to go and in the way that we ask them to go there. You know, so mm. that's what I mean. And that also translates to our employees, to our kids, you know, to our husbands and wives, to uh, all relationships, really. Uh, and, you know, and if you're an employee with a boss, it, it goes the same way, too. It's like we are, in fact, energetically tied together. Yes. Yeah. No, we, we, you know, I don't... <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've all heard the, the saying that we end up looking like our pets yes. or our pets look like <laughs> us. Um, but you take that a step further, and I think it's going to tie into what you were just saying there. I do, What yeah. do you mean when you say that our dogs mirror us? You know what? I want, to, I want to start answering that by telling you a story first. Go ahead. So I worked with um, a husband and wife a, number, a few years ago, and they had brought in a new greyhound. The greyhound's name was Sasha. And Sasha, big dog, you know, Greyhound's a pretty good-sized dog, and they've got yep. pretty big, sharp teeth and whatnot. But, <laughs> uh, but anyway, Sasha really bonded with the, the uh, wife, uh, with Yvonne. And, mm-hmm. um, and it, Sasha started attacking her husband, Gordon. Right, and I get that. They, Yeah, you get it. Uh, and so he wouldn't let him in the bedroom. Um, he bit him. <laughs> um, the he, dogs ruin our sex life. I oh, gotta go. yes. Oh, yeah, exactly. A dysfunctional love triangle, you know? Um, so anyway, <laughs> they're really having trouble, and they're trying to decide whether to get rid of Sasha, to put him down. Was he, you know, was obviously dangerous. What are they going to do? And so they brought me in, in kind of a desperate situation. And when, sure. I talked, when I talked to Sasha, Sasha told me that he was doing exactly what Yvonne wanted him to do. Woo! He looked into her mind and heart, and he saw how angry she was with her husband. And he felt that, it, yeah, consciousness of dogs is about protecting us, right? And so yeah. he got very clearly that his job, his role in this pack was to protect the woman, protect, you know, to protect her from the person that she was so upset with. And so, wow. <laughs> yeah, and so what we had to do is rebalance the relationship, and they had to take responsibility and own their upset with each other and begin yeah. to address it, to put it on the table and address it in a way that didn't wind up costing Sasha his life. Wow, that's fantastic. You know, now, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's really interesting because I don't, I'm, and I'm sure maybe you know this show, it's actually uh, uh, came originally out of Canada and it's called Out at the End of Your Leash or End of Our Leash. Mm-hmm. You know that mm-hmm. show, Val? I haven't, but I'd love to hear about uh, it. Yeah, It's great. Um, and it's a guy uh, it was a Canadian guy who goes in, does the same sort of thing, you know, works with dogs and, and helps people with, with their pets. And, you know, these dogs are mental. They're running all over the place and running the show. Mm-hmm. And invariably, this guy ends up doing psychology on, on, the, yes. on the, the couples that he's working with. Yeah. But, you know, because he, he shows that the dog's nothing more than in full reaction to whatever that person's doing. That's correct. And, and you know, and, and really, you know, like you're saying, you know, it's like, that dog is going to pick things up. You know, one of the things I talk about, and you know this, Val, from our workshops, mm-hmm. but one of the things we talk about is people who have small children, and they say, you know, well, we don't fight in front of the kids, but we're screaming at each other when there's no kids around. And then oh, God. Fun, one of the first things I say is, do you think your kids don't feel that? Yeah. Do you think your mm-hmm. f- kids don't feel that level of resentment yeah. that's going on because you don't deal with the conflict as it yeah. comes up? You yeah. think that that's actually making things better? It's not. Right. And I think that... 
because, and, and again, this is not my expertise, but I think, I'm guessing that because animals uh, don't say words, I think that they must have a, a an even deeper level of connecting to that stuff, uh, you know, that makes it so clear for them that yeah. there's some, some crap going on here between these two. Like you yeah. said, with that guy with, you know, his wife feeling like she needed a protector. Yes. Yeah. Fascinating well, stuff. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, animals, they reflect us. They reflect our intention. They, they'll mirror our body language, you know. So if you've ever noticed, like, if you got tense and stopped breathing, I'll promise uh-huh. you that within less than 30 seconds, every animal around you will also be holding their breath and will be tense. Say that again, because yes. that, that, that's a really yes. important piece. Yes. And, and you, dear listener, pay, if you've got a dog or a cat or a budgie or whatever the hell you've got, <laughs> just listen to this for a minute, because this, this is pretty fascinating stuff. Yeah. And actually, I'm, if I get a moment before the break, I'm gonna, I want to give you a little bit of science on this, because this is stuff that's really wild stuff. Say that again, Val, because that was very interesting. Right. So everyone around us mirrors what we're doing. So if we go into a survival mode which would be mm-hmm. holding our breath, breathing yep. shallowly, right, being tense, um, then everyone around us will be reflecting that same posture. It really happens almost instantaneously. But if anyone's a little slow on the draw or not, it wasn't paying attention, they'll still have picked it up within about 30 seconds, and they'll be mirroring it with you. That's not just but, animals. But, it's also people. But you said that the animals will do that, right? Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, so the dog will actually be holding its breath when you're holding your breath. That's yes. pretty wild stuff. Yeah. So if yeah. you think that this communication is not going on, it's going on all the time. All the time. Are you, yeah. are you familiar, Val, and, and, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, dear listener, but the, the research of Dr. Rupert Sheldrake? Uh, yeah, talk about that. That's great. Well, well Sheldrake hard. stuff is, is fascinating stuff, and I, I did a lot of research into Sheldrake's work and cited him in my dissertation many years ago, and I've had several conversations. The guy is an absolutely brilliant biologist and uh, who, t- who talks about morphogenetic fields. And one of the things that in his research was he worked with a lady out of New York who had an African gray parrot um, that had this full-blown, not, you know, we think of parrots as repeating what you teach them. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, what, what happened was that this animal was at such a level of communication with its owner that they, in one experiment, there's a lot of places we can go here, but just to give you one experiment, they separated her from the parrot and they put her in a different, not even in a different room in the build, in her apartment, but in a different room in the building. And they, they showed her pictures, um, just, you know, images. Mm-hmm. And they had somebody with a microphone next to the, next to the African Grey. Yeah. And this African Grey responded to whatever her emotional response was to the images. Yeah. So she was shown an image, for instance, of one of those firemen's calendars. You know the kind of thing, right? The guy's mm-hmm. got no shirt and looks all sweaty. <laughs> but he's got fireman, right? Beefcake. And, and, and the parrot went, ooh, sexy. <laughs> How's that? Huh? <laughs> now the parrot couldn't see the image. She was in another room in the building. Yeah, and it probably wasn't so really sexy to the parrot. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's a great story. I love that story. But, but that's a great yeah. example of us understanding yeah. that the animals are in yeah. communication with us. And right. more importantly, and I think this is where we need to go here, is understanding all that crap you think you're hiding from people, they're yeah. picking it up. The yes. only difference is, I believe, not the truth, but I believe that the animals have a bit less filter about just letting you know directly. Yes. Whereas your friends might pretend to themselves or to you that they don't get it. Yes. There's, there's well such said. a level of communication with us. We've got to yes. really get clear on making, because leadership is about really clear communication. That's one yes. of the great elements of leadership is having fantastic clarity in your communication. We're going to go to a break, and when we come back after the break, I'm going to go continue deeper into our conversation here with uh, leadership and what animals can teach us about leadership with my guest, Val Hart. She has just got some tremendous stuff for you, some, some really great information, and she is the creator of the Complete Animal Communication System Made Easy. I'm going to tell you more about that and about her when we come back in two. Contact Talk Radio has strived to be well-connected. Everything from the internet to your cell phone, and now Twitter. 
Yes, you too can find Contact Talk Radio on Twitter. Go to twitter.com backslash CTR Network and get connected to what matters to you. Don't listen to this unless you want more money. People have all kinds of ridiculous ideas about what it takes to achieve vast amounts of wealth and success. Consistently, those ideas are dead wrong. Think about it. What you've been told about creating wealth has likely been from those who did not, do not, or ever likely to have it. In his book, Don't Read This Unless You Want More Money, Dov Barron collapses your old money myths and shows you how to tap into your unique value, even if you don't know what it is yet. As you turn each page of this book, Dov Barron will walk you through a process that will have them banging down your door to give you money. Don't read this unless you want more money. Subconscious Tactics of the Truly Affluent is a guaranteed bestseller you'll want to buy for friends and read over and over again. Go to www.don'treadthisbook.com forward slash money to get your copy today. Welcome back. This is Dov Barron, host of the Accidental Guru Radio Show. And I'm here today with my guest, Val Hart. She is an author, teacher, speaker, internationally renowned animal communicator, and she is the creator of the Complete Animal Communication System Made Easy. And you can find her at valhart.com. That's V A L. And then heart, just like your own heart, H-E-A-R-T dot com, V-A-L-H-E-A-R-T dot com. And you can go there and you can find out more about her and about all of her uh, great products and system that she has for you. And I'm going to tell you more about where you can go for her in a, in a little while. But let's bring it back to leadership, Val. Um, great leaders are able to inspire others and as a result build teams. So talk yeah. to us about what we can learn from dogs about teamwork uh, and the rules of leadership, and why do you say, you know, the old saying is there's no I in team, but you say there's lots of L's. What, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, there are lots of L's. Um, you know, some folks think a team is only a bunch of followers and one leader. Mm-hmm. So the leader would be the I in that scenario. But that's yes. really not the best case scenario, and it often leads to problems. You love, like, tyranny and dictatorships and bad Absolutely. stuff. <laughs> bad I've relationships. In the Middle East bad. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, no one's really happy under that kind of leadership for very long, and that includes your dog, it includes your spouse, your employees, and your friends. We yes. all want and need to be and feel acknowledged, right? Respected, mm-hmm. heard, listened to, trusted, and loved, appreciated. And we want to contribute to whatever role we're playing, whatever hat we're wearing at the time. So let's redefine team. Uh, okay. you, may have, you may have heard it said, team uh, is together everyone accomplishes more. Yes. So together we create a dynamic partnership full of clear, energetic flow and the right course of action based on our direction, followed by affection, reward, and purpose which leads to mastery of the game. Okay, go over those again, because I actually <laughs> want the listeners to write those down. Oh, good, the, thanks. Now, because these are not about animals. These are about how to operate as a leader. And I thought yes. those were really profound. And, I, okay. and it's really easy to skip over those because they were fast. So I want you to take out your pen, dear listener, take out your journal, and, and, and Val's going to walk us through those steps again. So start again, please, for us, Val. So, all right, team, T, together, everyone accomplishes more. The okay. idea is that together we're creating a dynamic partnership. Right. And when we do that, we create clear, energetic flow mm-hmm. and the right course of action based on the direction that's set by the leader, right? Yeah. Followed by, and that's important to note that it's in this order, it's followed by affection, reward, and purpose. And when we do it all right, what we have is mastery of the game. So affection, reward, and... Mastery. Mastery. So, you know, one of the things we we teach in our relationship programs is reward the behavior you want. 
Yes. Uh, it's not particularly new. Um, in fact, it's it's quite old. But reward the behavior you want. We tend to punish behavior we don't want, and we need to shift That's that right. to rewarding behavior we want. Yes. A- and a- and it's no different with training animals or training people. And as you said, Val, earlier, we we teach people how to treat us. We we train them how to treat us. And we yes. need to be very aware of that, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, in our vocal tonality, in the words that we say, or however we're being with people. Right. And, and when you say mastery of the game, tell me what you mean by that. Uh, mastery of the game is when your team listens and reflects the wonderful qualities of loyalty and love. They labor on your behalf, and they're not going to leave. They're going to thrive. Right? Mm. So you have clearly defined rules of the game where everyone wins, or nobody wants to play anymore. Yes. It's a classic mistake in, uh, in dog training. Yeah, I've, I have so many clients tell me, you know, they're trying to train their dog, and they, they, they don't seem to be getting it. And when I tune into the dog, the dog is like, I am so bored. You know, <laughs> I, I got this the first time, first hundred times we did it, you know. Right. I don't understand what, what my person is missing here, but I'm bored. I don't want to play anymore. So, you know, if the game isn't going right, then it's usually because we're not clear about our request, our expectations, or because there's a re- resistance. You know, and a, 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 there's a lack of good leadership showing up as resistance. So, if you want a good game, you want to master the game of, of teamwork. Then it's all in the setup, right? Success right. is in the setup of the game. Um, you know, just I, I have some statistics here I want to throw out because I think sure. people may not really understand what. The lack of proper and good leadership in this country or in our world is, is costing us. Do you know right. that 75% of employees steal from a company? And yep, most of those I are do, repeat. sadly. That's true. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, one-third of all corporate bankruptcies are caused by employee theft. Wow, I didn't know that. The Boston Globe and Denver Post reported that U.S. companies lose nearly $400 billion a year and lost productivity due to time theft or loafing. Or yeah. being on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, it's estimated that 20% of every dollar earned by the and U.S. company has lost the theft. 20% of workers are late to work at least once a week. 33% of workers called in sick when they were actually not sick. 18% right. said, uh, of the employers said they have fired people for missing work who had no good excuse. <laughs> they had no reason for yeah. not being there. They just didn't no. want to be there, you know? So, but, uh, it is, so it, are you saying that all of that's due to lack of leadership? I am. Yeah. Yeah, I am. And I, think, because, I think, and I think that that's a big pill to swallow for most leaders. Yeah, I understand. To actually take on the accountability of, this crap is happening because there's something missing in my leadership. Yes. Yes. So with dogs and everyone else in your pack, whether it's a company or a family or just, you know, me and my dog, then everyone, everyone's asking, what's in it for me? And a good yep. leader yep. answers that question by offering good direction. They ask for what you want. They reward you at the right time when you do it in ways they appreciate. And they practice until you become in sync and aligned with each other. And if you're not having fun together, then there's something wrong. You have to reevaluate what you're doing. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. I know. Uh, Dov, you said that if you want to know what you believe, look around you because it's yeah. reflected in others, and that includes our animals. So mm-hmm. every day they show us where our skills, our intention, our clarity, and our communication. They show us where we're missing the boat. They're going to mm-hmm. reflect it for us. They reflect our attitudes, our emotions, and our beliefs. So if you want to know what you believe, look to your animal, and they're going to show you some stuff. It may not be good and fun to look at, but if you do, if you pay attention, then you can immediately correct it, reconnect, get back on track and on purpose, and get back in the game. What's you, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute, Val. Good. Okay. So what's your, do you have... What's your funniest animal story? Because, you know, animal communication, I mean, you got it, like I said right at the beginning, you know, I think that it's something that's kind of out there for most people. Yeah. Um, the idea that we can communicate with animals or, or um, and yet it's so obvious that that's what we're doing outside of sit, 
and Wookiees, outside of all those kinds of things. I mean, like, yeah. you know, other levels of communication. It seems right. pretty out there for most people. Right. Um, what, what, do, you have a, do you have a funny or a profoundly insightful story about uh, your interaction with animals that really uh, has let you know that how important it is for us to, to be able to communicate from a position of, you know, what I always say is a great leader has great compassion as well. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and so that compassionate piece, it doesn't mean you're not rock solid. It doesn't mean you're not absolutely firm and have great boundaries. Right. But it also means you have a level of compassion that allows you to really hear. And that's why, to me, communication is always so so two-way, but to really yeah. hear what's going on for that person. Do you have any any of those for us? Oh, I've got thousands. I'm sure you <laughs> We have to find a good one. Um I think I want to talk about uh, two of my clients. They had two dogs, uh, older older dogs, uh, medium-sized dogs, um, and they were aggressive. They kept attacking each other and putting each other in the vet clinic, you know, being torn, uh, stoned back up, you know, and bloodying sure. and all that. And it was escalating, and they didn't know why. And so they mm-hmm. called me in, and what we discovered is, is that there was, <laughs> guess, I bet you can guess, there was a lack of leadership in the home. <laughs> there you go. The dogs Surprise. were out of control. They thought yeah. they were leading. Um, yeah. And then when anyone would come to the house or even the UPS would drop off a package, you know, or, um, or, or anything untoward would happen, the dogs would go nuts, and then they would take it out on each other. So what we found right. is that there was all this stress and tension in the, in the, in the relationship, the husband and wife. We found... Um, that they weren't managing things properly at all. They were not paying attention to when the dogs were uh, challenging their leadership and they were not establishing themselves as trustworthy. And they were mirroring their people's upset and all their instability and their insecurity and all that stuff. And so it was so simple. Are we, as soon as I told them what the dogs were telling me, both the yeah. husband and wife started laughing. Yes. And, you know, they looked at each other and they went, oh, shit, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not about the dogs. Okay, we got it. And so, you know what, they rebalanced. They got clear about what they actually needed. Um, they offered more training. They demanded more respect. Um, mm-hmm. And their dogs are fine. Uh, their dogs but, you know, dogs you know something you said the that I think is, is, a, is a, a great message about leadership, whether it's with a dog or whether it's with people. Mm-hmm that I think we, we've all got to pay attention to. And even, you know, we, I, could, I could be having exactly the same conversation with somebody around parenting. Right. And one of the great things of leadership and communication is consistency. Yes. Consistency. If You know, like you're talking about uh, affection and reward and all that, you know, to create the mastery of the game. Yeah. But if you're inconsistent, that's never going to happen. So you're right. the leader one minute and then you're this big softy that's not, you know, going to let all the rules go by, let all, let all the guidance go out of the window, yeah. then, then you teach the person that they cannot trust you, or you teach the animal that they cannot trust you to be consistent, yeah. a- and you need that level of consistency. I think that's probably, I'm guessing that that's as true with an animal as it would be with a human being, and probably even more so. Yeah, and I'm so glad you brought that up. I've got another quick story for you. One of my clients had a show dog. And they would go to the shows. They were working on, you know, getting their next title. And the dog would get out in the core, in the, the it was, I think it was uh, an agility uh, kind of thing. And I mm-hmm. think that's right. Anyway, the dog gets out there, you know, and in practice, the dog is perfect. And she gets out there in the show ring in the stress of the competition and, you know, live with people watching and judging and all that. And the dog's wow. messing up. It's like not going out far enough, not waiting, she's coming back, not taking the jump, you know, all, all this strange stuff. And um, and she's just, you know, completely uh, has no clue what's going on. Right. And yep. so we, I got in there and I started working with her. The dog told me that she was confused. And uh, anyway, it turned out, long story short, is it turned out that for some bizarre reason, the woman, when they got in the show ring, she started changing her signal. Ah. So the cues and things that she had been so consistent with in practice, she changed in the heat of the game, uh, which completely left her dog dangling, you know, out there going, what the hell are we doing? (laughs) What? Uh, I don't know what you're asking me anymore, you know? So, of course, they're not going to (laughs) win. And again, for you, dear listener, 
Yeah. Uh, you know, again, you as I said, you may not even have a gerbil, but think about this in your life. <laughs> Where are you inconsistent in your messages? That's right. Like, don't be so upset that people are not responding in the way that you want if you are inconsistent with your messages. Yes. Well, Val, this has been intriguing. You've been a wealth of knowledge and insight, and I'm certain that you've already begun to awaken uh, within our listener the ideas of what leadership is from this from this level of again consistency, being the leader of your own pack. And I'm sure you sure you've got people fired up. I know that within the constraints of a radio interview, we can only tell us so much. Yeah. And I know that you've given us some real treats that have got our listeners sitting up and begging for more. So I know you have many fabulous resources to support our listeners. I do. Uh, if you, dear listener, have enjoyed today's discussion, uh, you'll love Val's dynamic teleseminars, teleclasses, and she has a home study program to help you learn more and learn how to deepen your connection and improve your relationship with animals and with yourself. You can learn more about Val and her courses, her programs, and her services, again, at www.valhart.com. That's www.valhart.com. Val Hart, animal leadership expert. Is there one last very short message you'd like to leave our listener with? I think it might be this. When we choose to become a good leader of our own pack, we empower ourselves to live our best life, to connect, to show up for ourselves and others. We are now present to our purpose and our mission in life, and we can be available and play well with others. Fabulous. Thank you. Dear listener, remember you can find us on iTunes and on www radiodove.com where you can click on show info and you can leave your comments and feedback about this show or any of our shows remember to tell your friends to also wrap their ears around our big beautiful signal and subscribe to the show by the way you can find us on Facebook by simply going on Facebook and searching Accidental Guru Radio there you'll be able to chat with our uh, other listeners and with me about shows gone by and the kind of shows you'd like to have again I want to thank our Fabulous guest today, Val Hart. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Dolph. It's been a pleasure having you. Delighted. Thanks go out to our new producer, Sam, the man, and the entire team at the Accidental <laughs> Guru Radio Show. And once again, that special reminder to you to tell your friends that we've packed up, we've moved, and if you want to make sure that your friends get their fix of the Accidental Guru Show, make sure that you catch us live every Thursday morning at 10 a.m., Pacific and Sundays at 11 a.m. Pacific. Of course, my special thanks go to you, dear listener, for being part of our ever-growing global family, the global movement. Keep telling your friends to tune in and get all our solid success solutions. This is Dov Barron saying, remember to go share something you've learned today with someone else because when you share it, you learn it at a deeper level. Remember, you are a diamond. Let your light shine. Because it is my belief that there is only one of you. You are unique. There isn't another one of you on the planet. And no one has the right to tell you you are less than magnificent. You do deserve to live in affluence. I look forward to meeting you in person very soon. Maybe at one of our live events. Maybe tomorrow at our Claim Your Competitive Edge event. In fact, you can go check out www. The letter C, the letter Y, the letter C, and then the word edge. www.cycedge.com and find out how you can join this elite group of people who are flying in from around the world to join us for Claim Your Competitive Edge by breaking through your biggest, three biggest fears, discovering how to get what you want in just 16 minutes a day while supercharging your DNA and having the most fun possible in a three day chat. A chat sort of stretch. Woo! Borrowed the mouth for a moment there. My dog's got it, just taking it away. <laughs> Again, that web address is www.cycedge.com. Until next time, this is Dov Barron, host of the Accidental Guru Show, saying it's time to stop rolling over and playing dead and begging for treats. Take the leash of your own life and your own leadership firmly in hand and take yourself walkies all the way to success. Once again, thank you for making my world a little better each week. You can find out more about upcoming shows, again, at RadioDove.com. Until next time, this is Dove Baron saying, see you next week on the Accidental Guru Show. Same time, same place, same channel.
Bye bye now. It is my belief that each one of you is unique. There isn't another one of you on the planet. And no one has the right to tell you you're less than magnificent. You've been listening to The Accidental Guru with Dov Barron. Join us again next week when Dov will be giving you the competitive edge without losing your soul. Same time, same place, same channel. On behalf of Dov Barron, remember, take yourself and life like a shot of tequila. Straight up, live with courage, follow your passion, and stay real.